it's back now with a new series. Yeah, the sketch show features performances from some of the UK's best-known comedians. We'll talk to two of the performers, Lawrence Rickard and Matthew Benton, in a moment. First, here's a look at this afternoon's episode. It would indeed seem that the Queen is seeing other men behind the King's back. And it is as we feared. We should inform His Majesty. Yes, of course. Did you know how his moods are? Yes, he does tend to behead the messenger. Indeed. And there is only one man for the job. Only one man who could break such terrible news to His Majesty, King Henry VIII. You don't mean... Yes. Will Summers. You called? <laughs> Stonk! Hoi, hoi! Hank! So what seems to be the problem, gentlemen? Catherine Howard. Ah, uh, another man. Of several. Oh dear, that is a pickle. Yes. And we need to tell the king so he can arrange a divorce or a beheading or something. <laughs> and Lawrence Ricard and Matthew Benton join us now. Good morning to you both. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, you really had no fun at all making this series, did you? A awful. miserable time, wasn't it? <laughs> really, really yeah. chore. It was uh, it's a nice thing, nice thing to, get, to get paid to do something like that. It, it looks like fun and it is, was tremendously good fun. How, how would you describe it for the uninitiated? Because I was kind of saying to Bill Ellie, it's sort of like Life of Brian with Blackadder. That's how I see it, but I don't um, know how that, you describe it. That's probably it. better than what I would have said, mate. <laughs> <laughs> There's definitely a, a Monty Python mm. influence to it, but everything is true. That's the unique thing yeah. about this, is that however ridiculous things might seem, it's... Uh, mm. It's all based on fact. Mm. Yeah, from, from the outset, the sort of, you know, the, the guidance we were given was everything had to be factual and everything had to be funny and not sort of funny in that it will be okay, a kid will laugh at that, you know, to something which was funny for a family audience. Yeah. So children laughing and hopefully... Well, I, yeah, no, I was, I was thinking, watching it, it's a shame it's on CBBC because it, it is a very funny <laughs> programme. <laughs> but I, I mean, some of it, I thought, I can't believe that. There's... Uh, the bit about the Roman emperor, whose name was a mystery to me, El Elaga... Elagabalus. Where did he... Is that his real name? Mm. Elagabalus. <laughs> it's all was, true. It's all true. I think he was 16 when he became emperor. Yeah. yeah. And he'd been executed by the time he was 18. Oh, he didn't last yeah. long. He didn't <laughs> last very long because he did things like throwing live snakes at the crowd in the gladiatorial games. Yeah. He was a very weird sadistic... He made his, <laughs> made his, um, his dinner guests eat rocks yeah. dressed as... Fruits. Yeah, mm -hmm. he was the ultimate troublesome teenager. Yes, exactly. Did, Power as well. So. Do, do you think that that, that then have I have either of you got children? No. 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 So I'm just sort of wondering. Do you think kids actually learn the sort of the facts, the historical facts, dates, and who was around and when, or is it more just the gruesome stories that they absolutely I th love? I think there's. Um, I think it, it's both, and they, they certainly do seem to take it in. It's kind of done slightly by stealth in that. You, you're laughing, so you're not aware that you're learning. But like in the last series, there was a uh, song about the um, the wives of King Henry VIII, and now a number of children have sort of said to us, now they remember who they are, the order in which they died, how they died, because that came in from looking at the song on the series. Mm. So mm. It's sort of, they're learning without the songs realizing. in particular, they learn off by heart. Yeah. Yes. Well, let's have a look at one of those songs, the Spartan School Musical. Here we go. Hey, all you helots! You zealots, you Peloponnesians, you Lacedaemons, all of Leonidas's army, let's get barmy for the Spartan School Musical! Go, Go Sparta! High school where boys have turned to men. I pack my sword and shield, we don't use paper in pan. Everyone's a jock here, we don't have fart nerds. For weedy kids, we're left to die as breakfast for the birds. We're taught to love a fight, we're taught not to be meek. And if we're good, they feed us three square meals every week. Let's go fight in our mind, it's exciting now. <laughs> All you're missing is Gerard Butler. Isn't it? Yeah, 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 he, he was, was busy that day. <laughs> <laughs> so how many takes do you normally have to get through them before you always um, collapse laughing? <laughs> Usually quite a few, actually. Mm. Um, yeah, every now and then we have to ha take five minutes and mm. calm ourselves down. Because it's yeah. um, it, based on the Terry Deary books, presumably, but you've had a lot of extra writing talent drawn in over the, in the past. There's quite a big it? writing team mm. involved. Um, and so the 
the books are there in the meetings and we look through them and we use those for inspiration for sketches. Mm. But, mm. And you both um, contribute in terms of writing as well. That's right. I sort of yeah. came on the first series as a writer and then kept turning up at the studio. And uh, <laughs> so I sort of became uh, an actor in it, or one of the core cast by stealth, and Matt was acting in the first series. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, but the, the approach to the material has always been, there's so much that's added to it in performance that the two, it's quite sort of natural for... Have you got a favourite favorite period of horrible history yourselves? I like wearing beards. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, I, I'm not very good at growing real ones. So you like doing the Vikings so musical. I like Vikings that was a lot for that good. reason. Mm. And the cowboys, you know, any day where you walk into a costume trailer and they're like, choose your hat and gun, that's a good day. <laughs> <laughs> you just get to revert to uh, childhood. What oh, best fact that you've that come across? Uh, I don't know, a lager barler stuff was always really good. I liked him. At, he'd put uh, a lion in one of the rooms in his palace as a practical joke. So when so, people snuck in there for a look, yeah, they'd be eaten. I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's an that's an audacious practice. What did joke. the cowboys do? That was well, I mean, they did lots of horrible things, but mm. particularly that you focused on in the series. Well, a lot of the good things I think are about what people didn't do that we mm. all think they did. Oh, yeah. So one of the cowboy things is a song about the fact that really what they did was just herd cattle, mm. so and they, all the exciting things that we did. think about them. Mm aren't really all what went on. Is all they did. What so pretty much. There weren't huge amounts of gunfights because they were unionised. So whenever there was a disagreement, they'd call their know. union rep who'd go, look guys, you know, just get back to the cows. We're all bit, we've all had a drink. <laughs> so, you know, I love it. Indians have elders, we have union reps. The cowboys well, yeah. have union reps. I mean, it's the same principle, yeah. isn't it? But and they also, get called a union rep. Yeah, and also, you know, they weren't sort of big stocky fellows because they had to spend all day on a horse so they tended yeah, to be quite, wiry. quite small and wiry yeah. yeah okay Hollywood's got a lot of answer for that yes yeah right. John Wayne thanks guys thanks very much thank you thank very you. much all the best with it and uh, Horrible Histories is on the CBBC channel every day this week from 5.15pm and on Tuesdays from next week should be peak viewing though really we should <laughs> all get a look at it